In Los Angeles, gang culture has attained nearly mythical stature. But on average, an LA gang member will not live to see 21. Still, membership continues to soar. So why do teenage boys bang? And what feeds the endless cycle of gang violence that goes on here? In the South Central neighborhood of Los Angeles, another gang war has begun. This one between the Grape Street and East Coast Crips. Across the city, police prepare for retaliation attacks. They've come to bury one of their own. His name was Brandon Bullard, a 25-year-old leader of the Grape Street Crips. I never thought I would get a call saying that Brandon died. I knew that it could happen, though, and I tried to prepare myself for that. Yeah, I hear you. He was shot three times. He was shot twice in the back and once in the leg. Outside, the police presence is heavy. When gangbangers briefly scuffle with a TV news crew, tensions rise and then calm. But inside the church, word of the scuffle ignites full-scale panic. This South Central crowd, conditioned to expect drive-by shootings at gang funerals, runs for safety. Everybody, everybody right now, sit down. And nothing happened. There was a misunderstanding outside, and I know we all a little jumpy, and it's okay. Is everybody calm? Is everybody calm? I would like to continue my son's service. Amen. Once calm returns, Brandon's brother and Kathy's other son, Kiwan, bids his big brother farewell. Ben, I'm gonna miss you. You weren't just my brother. You were somebody that I looked up to. And as long as I'm here, I'm gonna keep your memory alive and I'm gonna keep the stamp that you left on this earth alive. With you gone, Part of me is gone too. I love you forever. Always be missed. Like his dead brother, Kiwan is a Grape Street Crip and a prime target should this war spin out of control. It's just part of the culture here, I believe. It's part of life. If gang life is part of the culture of South Central and Compton, so too is the cycle of murder and retaliation it nurtures. Each year, LA gang wars claim more than 3,000 victims wounded or killed. Despite this toll, gang membership here continues to rise, from some 13,000 gangbangers in 1975 to more than 80,000 today. Many now enter gangs as early as seven or eight years of age. Why boys bang and why so many youngsters continue to seek out gang life is a question that even grieving mothers cannot fully answer. Grape Streets has been around a long, 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 long time. And so it's almost like tradition. Whatever generation is coming up, you know? Brandon's family, including his five children, look upon him for the last time. Allegedly killed by East Coast Crips at a late night party, Brandon Bullard died in a dispute that began over a girl. It often begins this way. A fight over turf, drugs, or women escalates into a single killing that then spirals into full-scale gang war. Across the city, the retaliations have already begun. Within days of Brandon's death, 13 people, 
grapes, East Coast Crips, and innocent bystanders have been shot. More will die in the coming weeks. Today, a former gang insider, whose identity has been hidden for his own safety, has managed to make contact with an East Coast Crips sect involved in the violence. We hope to discover why these young men are so eager to kill. We're over here in uh, the 97 East Coast Hood, and uh, we basically go around and see if we can find a yard, uh, do an interview maybe, get the guys out of the open. You know, there's a war between them and the Grape Street, so if they see them hanging out, uh, even us with them, you know, we're possible potential targets. Before long, a meeting is arranged with an East Coast gang leader, along with several of his gunners. Young Crips ready and willing to act as assassins in this latest gang war. Get you in your sleep, homeboy. You know me right here, man. Look at this face, I'm gonna get you The gang leader's name is Looney, and he proves more than willing to discuss the current war with the Grapes, a gang he mockingly refers to as the Fakes. Like many active gangbangers, Looney insists on concealing his identity behind a bandana or gang rag. This one, Crip Blue. You say, okay, this is over. We've gotten them back, you know, retaliation, this is over. Until they did, until all the fakes did. When all the fake streets did, that's when we would go to sleep. Right now, we just continue on keeping it cracking. As in most gangs, young members often earn their first stripes by carrying out missions for OGs or original gangsters like Looney who act as the father figure they never had. Oh, gee, homies, give us the words. I'm gonna go out there and let them have it. If I go murder somebody, I'm gonna go back to the hood, and everybody already strapped outside, prepared. I'm a prime example. Really, I can call it a bad prime example for all the people out here, because their kids are seeing what I'm out here doing and ended up being in what I'm involved in. Of all things OGs provide to boy gangsters, none are more critical to gang power or devastating to the city than the assault weapons they wield. Everybody like using these. This is what you call man. a Tech 9. This will take off anything in your family right here. Fake streets, look at it. I know y'all have some. I'm a killer, motherfucker. I ain't gonna sit here and play with you. I see you on the streets. My intention is to get you in public on sight when I see you. I feel like I'm a guy with this motherfucker. Feel me? Always stay packed and I'm cool. Pistol grip shotguns, Tech 9 automatics. AK-47s, military assault weapons for acts of war. Okay, I'm gonna I'm be coming up out the cut, you know what I'm saying? Keep it to my side, and I'm gonna stay low, and I'm gonna creep up on you. And by the time I bring it out, I'm gonna be dead on you. Just squeeze, and watch his clothes burn up with him. Looney's East Coast Crips claim a territory larger than Washington, D.C., with over 4,000 members. And in this latest war with the Grape Street Crips, they outnumber the enemy four to one. Understand the E and the C is on the east side. The Grapes got the die over this mother in my hand right here. You want this? You come and get the East Coast Crips, nigga. We the one that you want beef with, nigga. Now this is the Mossberg. Oh yeah, you can just shoot, you feel me? Knock somebody head off, knock their arm off, anything. Knock their leg off, anything. How young gangbangers kill is clear. But when asked repeatedly why they kill or whether they ever feel remorse, these young men seemed incapable of giving an answer. Can you put yourself in the shoes of the moms who've lost sons? Like, what would you say to a mom whose son you had to kill in the course of this war? Everybody take losses, you feel me? Shit ain't shit. Shit ain't shit, what does that mean? I mean, it ain't, it's whatever, it, ain't, it don't matter. I don't know, I just can't let it get to me, because when it gets to you, that's when you break down. And I just can't let it get to me. Just keep going on something else. Don't never think about it. Within days of meeting Looney, East Coast and Grape Street gunners have allegedly shot at least 15 people. In retaliation, East Coast gunners kill 19-year-old Morio Proctor, father of a newborn son, 
His gang affiliation remains unclear. The families of two young men killed recently in Watts are pleading for the violence to end. In an effort to end the killing, Brandon Bullard's mother and Morio Proctor's father hold a joint news conference. And I'm not impressed by revenge. I'm only impressed by peace. To honor the fallen people, please put your weapons down. And if all the parents of all these gaming members come together, we can make a change. Thank you for listening. But stopping the killing will require more than pleas for peace and police crackdowns. As long as kids continue to choose gang life in L.A., the violence here will never end. One place dedicated to giving kids a safe haven from the bloodshed is here, at Compton Soledad Enrichment Action, or SAYA School. Over 98% of the kids here are gang-involved, gang-related, or gang-banging. For many, this is a high school of last resort, a last chance before prison or death. Gang-involved kids are here because their lives were deemed in danger or because no other high school will have them. Hey, where you from? To me? Yeah. Oh, part boy. Which part? Mark. Where you from? To Long Crips. Loose 14 to 18-year-old Crips, Bloods, and Latino gangbangers including kids from warring factions in the East Coast Grape Street War. Outside of school, some of these kids might as willingly kill as Looney's gunners. If y'all was in the hood, I'd pull out a gap. But you know, this ain't the church, so... Here, for a few hours a day, they exist in a safe zone where warring gangs can coexist without killing one another. For more than 20 years, Father Stan Bosch has devoted his life to ministering to LA's gang-involved youth and helping them see choices that lie beyond gang life. Imagine uh, listening to sirens literally all day and all night long, listening to gunshots when you go to bed. Whole group of grade school kids, just a few weeks ago, I said, how many of you um, know somebody that was shot or killed? 90% of those kids raised their hands. Psychiatric studies suggest that gang-involved teens here suffer post-traumatic stress disorder similar to that experienced by Iraq war vets. I've been jumped, I've been shot at, I shot at somebody, I've been hit, and I already seen too much to be, to be scared of something. If I go to jail, I think that's gonna be the only way that I, I might not get killed out here. Of Saya Compton students, Everardo Navarro is one of the youngest and most hardened kids here. You don't give a f no more, you don't care. It's like whatever, like f it. If I gotta die to prove a point, that's what I'ma do. Just 16, Everardo is well on his way to becoming an OG of Compton's notorious CV117 Latino gang. It's a commitment, homie, for life. You want a gangbang, you take whatever comes to you, no matter what. Whether you get shot, one of your family members get shot, this is all, it's part of the game. In the four months we spend with these kids, more than 60 Los Angeles residents will be killed or wounded in gang shootings. Some of them innocent teens, others boy and girl bangers engulfed by the violence that they themselves embraced. Beyond providing safe haven, the goal at SAYA is to give kids practical and emotional coping skills to leave gang life behind. Okay. I, I'm not going to leave with Tyler right now. I'm looking yeah. at college. Um, what would you like to say to the world about your own experience? What is life like here in Compton, South Central, and Watts? Shoot first and ask questions later. That's, that's how we do stuff out here now. But that's just to survive out here. I, without doing that out here, you're a dead man. I mean, still want to go to jail. Every week, Father Stan encourages students to talk about the violence in their lives. Fight that boy, kicked out of school. I mean, kicked out like eight schools already. But it's not most people push. Although this group discussion is not therapy, 
It mirrors the exchange of emotions and real therapy Father Stan conducts here. Express yourself. It's your decision. Because you got to rest your life every five minutes, every, every one second. You don't know who will come through. All you got to do is just value your life and do the right choice. Some people don't think like that, though. Like, yeah. you know, some people, they, you know, bad temper. Like me, yeah. I, I probably won't think about it. Yeah. I probably just go ahead and do what I got to do, you know? Just start to think about it. Yeah. Start. One young fellow came so disoriented, he was literally walking in circles, saying, I'm starting to feel something I don't even know what to call it. Is it guilt? Is it feeling bad? Is it feeling nasty inside? I'm starting to have nightmares and memories of fellas that I've shot and fellas that I've seen killed right in front of me that I never thought I had before. And so to me, this is a big deal. This is a moment of awakening. And it's crazy because a lot of people like us, we really don't have to do stuff like this. I play basketball, I don't play football, I do music, I do it all, but it was something about the streets that was just like, man, I gotta do it. You know, I gotta be out there. You know, I don't know if it was the- Durante Patton is 17 and associated with one of the oldest blood sects in existence. So it ain't really he was moved to say it for his own safety and alleged participation in gang shootings at a local high school. And your, your hopes and dreams for yourself? To get my parents out the hood and get out the hood myself. Characterize um, Durante as um, extremely intelligent, a young man who's been loved, who has a deep capacity for compassion, and yet he's grown up in a difficult neighborhood that has seduced him into a gang world, into an allegiance with the fellas that he grew up with, um, that he cannot leave easily. Right now, I'm just trying to get up out the hood to see something different because my whole life I done seen the hood. The more I keep staying here, I, I know death is coming. These are streets right here, man. I was raised there, my n this is real. Away from school, home videos reveal the gangbanger persona Durante takes on in the street. Yeah, my is going to school. Yeah, do that. You know what I mean? Get that GED. You know what I'm saying? Get that high school diploma. You know what I'm saying? If you want to gang bang, gang bang because you want to do it. Don't gang bang because the other pump your head to it. Looters park pyrus, number in the hundreds, and control 25 square blocks of Compton. They make most of their money from robbery and selling marijuana and crack cocaine. On the street, he may be all gangster, but within the safety of his own home, Durante's videos reveal a teenager willing to dream of life beyond Compton. When I'm at home in the house by myself, I do music. This is what keeps people like me off the streets, you feel me? It's music. I'm about to let y'all hear one of the tracks right now. This is called Struggle. Look, it's hard to stay focused when all I see is negativity. I strive to survive doing anything to get a place to eat. I'm on my P's and Q's, so I never get a night and sleep. I should have listened to my family. They said this ain't the life for me. I've done a lot of things that I knew wasn't right for me. What goes around, comes around, and it's sad that's coming right for me. But until that time I hold my ground, I guess I have to fight the streets. <laughs> Man, I guess I gotta fight the streets. We're so born to the struggle, trying to live my life so Certain kids game bang because of family issues, you know, like they don't have a father figure in their life. So, you know, if you see an OG there and he need a little homie, it's like you a son now, you know. It's like whatever you need, he's going to either give it to you or help you get it. In Compton, there are many older gangsters willing and able to take on this role of father figure. One of the most colorful is an Acacia Block Crip revered by his boy bangers. Somebody around here got to have some brains to keep peace and stuff organized. And that's what I do. Try to keep little ones from doing something stupid. Like the kids he leads, who started young after seeing his own brother die on a corner just one block away. 
to the next corner where a uh, guy got killed that shot in the neck with an AR-15. I can show you the position where the shooter was at and where he was standing at when he got shot. Yeah, this is my brother. I had just walked to this corner and I told him, I said, you know, because my brother's not from my neighborhood, he's from Carver Park. And I told him, you know, my homeboys just killed a Mexican. So uh, watch out. He was standing somewhere right in here. And the shooter was across the street by that car over there. And uh, I heard the shots, but I'm looking, I don't see nothing. So I seen him run, he jumped the gate, and I seen stuff flying off the tree right here. Like the bullets hit me. They shot around 15, 20 times. After he shot, I ran out and he was shot in the neck. We went to the hospital. He was telling me something, but I couldn't understand. I was shocked. I think that was the first time I seen somebody like dying. And then my homies got the gun. He had a gun in his pocket, took the gun out. And he passed away. And I went crazy. I went crazy after that. I start gangbanging more. Start shooting people and stuff. Not anybody though, enemies. Them, basically, CB7 old. Who was 14 when he saw his brother Derek die? To him, the hood is a war zone and his street a country he is determined to defend. If you're coming over here, you're coming over here to harm us. You have no bi business being over here. You won't see me in an enemy neighborhood, not unless I'm going to do something. I have no reason to be over there. Since his brother's death, Pooh has been arrested more than 20 times, spent over five years in prison, and is now out on bail for allegedly shooting a Latino gang member with links to the crew that killed his brother over 16 years ago. Is there any place for you guys to practice your, your marksmanship where you can practice shooting? The gun range, but it's closed down. So where do you do it now, though? You don't. You practice when you see a motherfucker walking down the street. That's the practice. I got shot right here. This is a 9 millimeter. Went in right here. It came out right here. That was, that was an accident. One of the homies shot me right there. I've been shot six times. One of them pulled out a, a semi-automatic from the, from the right side, and he pointed it right on my head. Shot, shot around nine times at me. Uh, and luckily, he only hit me once. The motherfucking T flash shot me. They put up on me in a raggedy ass mobile home. I've been shot in the stomach with a 32. I've been shot myself in the leg. It's just life out here. Ankle down here, my ass, my arm, my head. I've been shot right here with a 9mm. Went in right here, came out right here. I got shot in my hand grabbing a gun, stopping somebody from shooting somebody else. I got shot a day after one another. The end of one year, the beginning of the next year. Right where the Compton at? Got my zipper. Oh, uh, where else? I think that's about it. I've been shot. Going on. You just had them. You just leave it like that. Up in Watts, East Coast and Grape Street Gunners are busy. Their war is reignited and has now claimed at least one innocent bystander. Chantel Johnson, a 36-year-old shopkeeper, is gunned down with two others in his store. The assailants, apparently Grape Street Gunners, mistook him for an East Coast Crip, hitting him multiple times in a drive-by shooting. Is there anybody you shot and realized it wasn't the target, that it was a mistake? No, nah, I'm going straight to the enemy. I'm going to hit you in your head or your chest. I ain't trying to hit no innocent people or nothing. Your enemies don't care how old are you. You could be the oldest cat. You could be the youngest cat. You represent that hood. You are enemy, you're going to get killed. That's just how it goes. Like Pooh, Everardo's gangbanging relates, at least in part, to the loss of someone close to him. I was just getting ready to go to soccer practice. And they called the house. And they let us know that my brother was dead. My mom took it hard. We all, we all did. Now we just don't, we don't really talk about it no more. Juan Navarro was 20 when he was shot in the head by a rival gang. For his little brother, it marked a life-changing event. Like, it's just at first, got somebody you look up to, talks to you, tells you what's good and bad. Next day, you try to look for him, and he's not there no more. And to me, that was hard. And I think that's one of the reasons that I started gangbanging. Right here. 
Carver Park. We're in Carver Park right now. This is Carver Park Compton. Home to Everardo and the CV-117 Mexican gang to which he belongs. You could tell. You could just tell. Notoriously violent. The CV-117s are now at war with a black gang called the Carver Park Crips, who live right across the playground from Everardo's house. Head of Carver Park, east side 11 8. Spinning on these We don't give a f If Pooh, Durante, or any black kid were to venture here after dark, it could mean death. They know they, they want to come in and start something. They're going to hear something pop, something big. So they know better. Now 16, Everardo is well on his way to becoming a shot caller, a gang leader just like his dad, who was deported to Mexico for gang activity earlier in the year. Right now, like, I kind of feel like a little pressure, you know, on me, because I got to come up with money almost every time of this. The end of the month. Many of our fellas' um, dads have booked from the family early on, if ever present, and or are in jail, prison, um, and are in other countries and, and can't get across our borders. So fellas are left with a father wound, um, and they've been raised with that deep wound inside that, that gets dumped out onto others. I, I cannot be mad at my dad because all he wanted us is to have something he never had. It's cool to me, I see it as, it's just getting me prepared, that's it. As the man of the house, Everardo's biggest responsibility, as he sees it, is to care for his little brother, Juan. I just put myself as an example to him. Like, if you want to end up like me, look, ain't nothing positive about me. They just expect me to either go to jail or die, that's it. They don't expect me to do nothing. Some more. I'm gonna show y'all, you know, what really goes down, down here. Everardo's home videos reveal life difficult to fathom. Show me what you got from the Carver Park, you got me? Some of the children in this room have not even reached their teens. So, no. <laughs> so which one, honey? You high? Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, as chilling as this scene is, it is one Father Stan has witnessed before at Everardo's home. The hollow tits for the mother. First day I rode up to his home, um, he had um, a gun pointed at his cousin. His, gun, his cousin had a gun pointed at him on the front steps. Um, they were evidently playing, but those guns were real. For the gangbangers of Compton and South Central, access to guns, especially assault weapons, is all too easy. According to LAPD, they're often stolen from the homes of legal gun owners or come from legal purchases made by girlfriends and middlemen. Over on Acacia, in the street and in broad daylight, Pooh's gang flaunts an arsenal more than equal to the 9mm handguns carried by local police. Yeah, we young niggas. We all day, Never seen day 25, like this, not checked. All but day. we got these, though, you feel me? All day. But we ain't gonna tell y'all about it, though. We, yeah. You know, y'all know what these do. We do our stuff. This 45 caliber, 32 shot pistol has twice the rounds of the handguns carried by LAPD. It MS, anything no like this, the police run from, man. If it hang like that, they run, man. 32 here, shots. Man. You hear that? 32, 32 nah. shot hand Standard guns we is got around hand here. Guns. Anybody kill it. That's what I mean. We get we shot, here, like, nigga. in the face, though. That's what we aim for. You got your motherfucking cameraman scared. You better ask somebody about us. ATF. Look, quick. you can't put the gun up. This right here, baby Reno bumped, bumped on the police with 223. Had him backing up. Baby Reno, right here. This thing had him running. Baby Reno, running. Be out right now, too. More than any other weapons they face, Los Angeles police fear 223 caliber assault rifles like this one. Similar to the M4 used by special forces, this extreme high velocity weapon fires bullets that often fragment when striking flesh. 
This is a two, two, three. Let's kill anything that's walking, you understand? Anything that bleeds, this motherfucker will kill you, you understand? You wanna test it out? Yeah, I don't believe. Anyway, what else you wanna know about this motherfucker? I don't really know too much about it. I ain't no motherfucking gun expert. How All I know I can kill with this motherfucker. After their guns, they pull out the drugs, the most essential commodity in the gangland economy. Is that the big money? Is that the <laughs> this is 350 over here. These little ones is $100 a piece or whatever. Ecstasy pills right here. X. Next, Pooh shows us the digital scanners that help them track the cops. What's going on? Hear the police talking when they switch frequencies and all that. Business over here, man. Real scanners. You're going to hear them talking in a minute. Any call go through, it's going to come through here. Then the gang police, they'll switch frequencies, but it's a code to get to them, too. Is those legal to have or illegal? Bomb and radio shack is just the codes. So how do you get the codes for it? I get them off the street. People on the street know, you know, cool polices or something like that. They give it to us. Have you ever saved your ass by listening to that? Yeah, I knew they was coming. Yep. Yep. And I just got on. <laughs> Suddenly, two of Pooh's young crips take off running. Stay with a good lawyer. One time. I got one time. And that's what happens when one time comes. Get on. The gang's early warning system of scanners and cell phones kicks in. Yeah, they're looking out. They already seen him. Kill, I get away. Compton ATF. All right. West East. Where's he running? He, he, both of them two got warrants. Motherfuckers be wanted out here. He got a warrant and the other guy got a warrant. One thing, when you run from the police, something just happened and you run, keep running. Because they're going to block off everything. You got to keep running. Just run. When a squad car finally pulls up, it's clear that the officers inside know nothing of the assault weapon show and tell we've just witnessed. Yeah, I got released, so I've been out like a month and a week. Somebody called about loud music. We ain't running playing because we can't have the music playing with the camera so they can hear what we're talking about. It's gonna be on National Geographic. Hey, how's it going? Not bad. Alright. <laughs> Once the police pull out, Pooh's gang poses for the group photo they regularly send to homies, now serving time. One more. I got it. Yeah, I'll be writing all the homies in jail and stuff and sending them pictures, let them know what's going on. Camera rolling. Shortly after their group photo, Pooh and his boy bangers will arm themselves and seek out confrontation. You don't see how fast he can run if he out here right now. <laughs> In enemy territory. If it get rough, I might just have to turn off the camera if the homies get to getting off on them. Some shit we can't put on here. At Compton's Saya High School, 16 year old gangbanger Everardo Navarro is getting a new contract and choosing his next slate of classes. Just, it's yeah, career, it's career education and MPE. Yeah. Okay. So just, I'd rather have that. Students here so must show regular that? attendance and maintain at least a C average. If not, their contracts are revoked. For Everardo, who is on probation for assault with a deadly weapon, failure can mean a stretch in juvenile detention. And he's been passing all his classes, so he gets the full 30 credits every every contract. For the past six months. Everardo hasn't missed a day of school. Mr. Wax. What's your favorite class? I could say English right now. But my favorite class is that my new contract is probably going to be P. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Over in Mr. Nate's English class, 17-year-old Durante Patton continues to do good work and has made amazing progress since coming here to escape a gang war at his old high school. I went to Dominguez. And it was a, a little gang thing that, that happened, and 
certain people got hit and I, you know, I had to go. I had to leave. Number three, when the king died, what was the burial custom? Privately. Some teachers say that the little gang thing Durante refers to was a drive-by shooting. His involvement remains unclear. Still, his story and future are hopeful. And when his SAT scores arrived earlier in the week, no one was more surprised than Durante himself. Everybody was telling me to just like get a, a, seven, a 700 or something like that. You know, I was trying to aim for like 720 or something and end up getting a 954. It was crazy. With a 954, Durante might now have a chance to do something most of the kids here will never do. See what lies beyond Compton. I want to leave Compton and I know the only way for me to leave is to either go to college or the Marines, you know? That's the only way out for people like me. So I have to go somewhere where I'll be safe, where I feel, you know, comfortable. In gangland, safety often seems a low priority. Homies walking through the hood. Venturing far from Acacia Street, who and his boy bangers videotape an incursion into CV70 territory, home to the gang that killed Pooh's brother. You see, they wrote on the wall, we over here where they be hanging at or whatever. They got ATF crossed out right there on the wall. So you can see the right and the camera rolling. Their presence here is a severe provocation. If any 7-0s venture outside right now, Gunfire is likely. Look like they just wall banging basically because we all over here. Yeah, see what it is. Ain't nowhere. And as you can see, the homies is out here on their side of town. Shit. It get rough. I might just have to turn off the camera if the homies get to getting off on them. Man. Some shit we can't put on here. Yeah, but we on their side. Fully loaded. And we got a couple of. Two, two 16 shot 40s on us right yeah. now. Good. I ain't flossing nothing though. So just in case they come through, let's walk this way. Yeah, this this is one of the dudes' houses right here. That'd be writing on the wall. You gonna see how fast he can run if he out here right now. <laughs> he come writing on walls late at night. He just got out of jail or whatever. Right at his door. All they're gonna do is get in there and dial 911. But we finna get around this corner though. We on Raymond and Acacia. Less than 10 blocks from Pooh, Durante's family gathers to celebrate the chance that at least one son might now make it to college. Is there any small party to breathe a sigh of relief once he's gone and out to school? Yeah. Yeah, it will be a big relief, you know what I'm saying? Because he don't know nobody. You know what I'm saying? So don't nobody know him. So he ain't got no grudge against nobody, so should nobody have no grudge against him. So he should be, you know, ain't have to be looking over his shoulder all the time. You know what I'm saying? KB! Unlike many young gang members, Durante's home is filled with a loving family and an involved mother and father. I do worry for my kids because I, you know, I never know. You know what I'm saying? Living in Compton, I, I, I never know. I pray to God it never happened, you know, but I never know. Upstairs, Durante packs for his first trip outside of Compton and ponders a future off the streets. I'm going to, to visit Arizona State in New Mexico because a guy from New Mexico came up here and and he was trying to help people out, and I wanted to be helped. You know, I want to see more stuff than Compton. So I picked New Mexico. People told me it's just like this, except it's different people. They're not like on silly stuff like certain people out here is. They ain't on no game banging type stuff out there. So I leave all the game banging out here. I don't take none of that out there. It's gonna be real weird because I'm away from the city. I'm away from, you know, stuff that I'm used to. Like I said, I really don't feel safe without sirens, and I don't know if the sirens gonna be over to school like that. For the first time, Durante opens up just a bit as to why and when he started banging. 
This is one of the signs that we use right here with my cousin Jeffrey. He, he was murdered. My cousin got shot 13 times on Mother's Day. So his mother had to come, her, his mother came back from her trip just to you know, find out that her son is dead. His cousin, Jeffrey Young, was 18 when he died after a gang drive-by. This is actually when I first started really hanging out with, excuse me, hanging out with the gang banging type of people was when he got killed. His girlfriend was pregnant and he never had a chance to see his baby. His death took a toll on everybody, a lot of people. We still mess with me to this day. Knowing that, you know, he ain't had, you know, never had a chance to see his daughter. If accepted to college, and if he doesn't die before he gets there, Durante's story is testament to the power of family. The biggest gang to me was my family. My family, we, we're, you know, we're a gang. Because when, whenever something happened, I call one of my family members, you know, and they be on their way. That, that, that's the person that you know that won't, you know, leave you behind. Back at Saya, Everardo has stopped showing up, worrisome for a kid with a perfect attendance record, until now. Soon, Father Stan learns the reason for his absence. Either Everardo, his gang, or one of his OGs have allegedly been greenlit for murder by the Mexican Mafia. The transgression remains unclear, but what is clear is that Everardo knew as well as anyone the brutal nature of gang justice. You open your mouth too much, they're gonna close it for you. If you're there, somebody's there with you on that day, whoever's with you is going with you. Before he went into hiding, the greatest dream this 16-year-old boy could conjure was moving to the quiet California suburb of Palmdale. It's amazing how young folk have a difficult time even dreaming, that we fail to help our kids to dream. I think Everardo's was to maybe have a place out in Lancaster or Palmdale where he could sit out on the porch. Out there, everybody, you know, treats you the same. You go somewhere, hi, how you doing, this and that. You need help. Then I'd push him a little bit further, saying, but what are you doing all day to be able to pay for that place? I'd never thought it before, because slamming is so much easier, and slinging and, and robbing, and it's, it, it's not an option to think that I can make a legitimate living. When I'm out there, I feel like, like it's cool, actually, could just, like, relax. I don't have to be, like, car passes and I have to be over here just turning and trying to mind other people's business. Nah, I could just relax and actually just sit there and just think. And so I pray that whomever might be watching this might be able to claim their own power in people's lives and kids' lives to allow them to talk about their experience and to dream dreams because we really act on how we see the future. And so many of our kids have very bleak futures because they have such shallow dreams. This world is f***ed up. This is hell, if you ask me. This is hell. So we just going over here to his grave site, you know, show our respects. Over on Acacia Street, Pooh visits his brother's grave at Compton Cemetery. I think about him every day. I, I went crazy. I went crazy on CV7O's. It's more personal than a hood thing with me. My advice, you know, don't, it ain't worth it. Don't gang bang. It ain't worth it. That's on occasion. If I had a chance not to do this, I wouldn't know what I know now. I don't think I'm a die behind this gang stuff. And hopefully if I make it a little bit longer out here in these streets, I'm leaving the state. For somewhere where nobody know me. I can't stand Compton. I pray and hope he's in a better place. He don't have to worry about what's going on out here. We're gonna be all right. See you when I get there. That's about it for now, man. It's Compton. Then, 
heartbreaking news comes in. At a skating rink popular with LA gangbangers, another young Grape Street Crip has been cornered and killed by East Coasters. He is Kathy Wooten's youngest son and younger brother to the Grape Street leader whose murder ignited this war eight weeks ago. And as long as I'm here, I'm gonna keep your memory alive and I'm gonna keep the stamp that you left on this earth alive. Just 23 when he delivered this eulogy, Kiwan Bullard was father to his own little boy and targeted by East Coast Crips for wearing a shirt that memorialized his big brother Brandon. In an interview after her son Brandon's murder, Kathy Wooten said she believed that Kiwan was not gang active. He's gang affiliated, he's not gang active. And because of what happened to Brandon, you would automatically think he finna be gang active again. I don't believe he's gang active mentally anymore. Whether he was actively banging or not, Kiwan followed his older brother into gang life and now follows him into gang death. He got into that gang stuff when I was out of town. I believe that's when it really, you know, hit him. So when I came back, it was, uh, you know, it was already what it was. It was what it was. Whatever their reasons, like thousands of other LA teens, Kiwan and Brandon sought out gang life, a life never far from home since their own mom, it is later revealed, was an early associate of the Grape Street Crips. Is it possible to end the gang banging but not end the gangs? Like how do you get rid of the violence if you're not going to have the gangs go away altogether? If you kill the gang, the gang, not the violence. If you kill the gang and the violence, then you're killing friendship. You're killing family ship, because some of these people are family. But to change the, the game, I'm not sure if, if that happened. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Maybe it is. At least on this day, it is difficult to imagine a future. In which the gangs of Compton and South Central no longer exist. <laughs> 